In this video, I'm gonna talk about the number one question that people must ask whenever they get into blockchain. And I'm making this video in response to an email that I got in my inbox from one of you all. So I wanted to answer it here on my YouTube channel today so that it might help more people. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So let's get into this question, right? The number one question that I get over and over again from people who are new to blockchain development. And this is really critical, right? Because this could save you, <laughs> you know, months and years if you don't get the answer to this question, right? So you're gonna wanna pay attention. So I wanna answer this question and also a few more, all right? And this is actually a new kind of video that I'm trying out on this channel where I answer several questions from you all and also keep you up to date on what's happening in the blockchain space so that you can stay relevant and also let you know about some blockchain developer jobs that have opened up so that you can get hired and start your career as a blockchain developer. So let me know down in the comment section below if, if you like this video and you want me to make more just like this one. All right, so let's get into this question. So this is from Ali. So Ali says, I'm interested in blockchain. I come from a bootcamp background. However, I'm on the ropes about whether I should go uh, to uni to do a CS degree, then get into blockchain. I've read around and I've heard a lot of people say self-taught devs lack the foundations to build scalable applications because of the lack of understanding around data structures and algorithms. Do you think I should get a CS degree before I join your bootcamp? So that's a great question, Ali. And really there's one big question behind this. And this is the question I wanna highlight today. I'm gonna to answer this and then I'm gonna go answer all your questions. But this is the question I get over and over again from people who are trying to get into blockchain is, if I have very little programming experience, should I go learn blockchain first or should I go learn a bunch of other stuff first before I learn blockchain? And this is a really important thing to get right because it can save you a ton of time on your journey to becoming a blockchain developer, all right? So my opinion is that you should learn blockchain first. Let me explain why, all right? And I've actually changed my opinion on this over time, but I'm gonna defend it right now. I think learning blockchain first is the most efficient way to become a blockchain developer because it saves time. And sure, for most people who are becoming blockchain developers and actually working in it, there's a lot of skills that are required in order to do this. There may be some full stack skills like JavaScript or Python, for example, you know, other skills that I show you on this channel. But my recommendation is to start learning the thing that you actually want to get good at first and learn these other skills as you go, like around that. So for example, if you wanna become a blockchain developer, I recommend learning, you know, the programming languages required for doing that. So let's say that you wanna build smart contracts for an application, well, I would start there. And as soon as you find the need to like learn JavaScript to do that, maybe you like to write tests for the smart contracts or deploy it or write a client side website that talks to it. I would learn the amount of JavaScript that you need to know in order to do that thing. Here's why. All right. I said a second ago, this is more efficient and it is. And also it's better because it gives you purpose. All right. So whenever you have a really specific goal and purpose in mind, it takes out all the other noise, all right? So let's just say, for example, you thought you wanted to learn blockchain, and so instead you go to like codecademy.com and you do the JavaScript lessons for like six weeks or something like that. Well, you're gonna learn a lot of JavaScript that's not necessarily relevant to building smart contracts, building applications. Uh, the really important thing is that you have context here. And when you have context, it makes the learning come alive. It gives it purpose. And it's a much faster and efficient way to learn what you actually want to learn. So in summary, I think you should learn blockchain first because the learning is going to be so much better when you have a specific goal in mind. And digging into Ali's question more, you know, they say... Uh, Self-taught developers may like the foundations to build scalable applications because of a certain lack of understanding. Okay, so when you learn the way that I talked about, yes, you will have holes in your knowledge, but those holes are best filled on the job. So if you want to learn efficiently and you want to like get hired as a blockchain developer or just build your own apps, all the crazy nuances that come from software development are best learned while you're gaining experience. So if you learn the minimum skills that you need in order to get hired, you just learn everything else while you're actually building things. That's how I learned as a self-taught programmer. And I knew other programming languages before I got into blockchain, but that was one of the ways that I got started really fast as a self-taught programmer, like moved really fast is because I just learned what I needed to know to get the job done and I learned everything else on the job. 
So I hope that helps, Allie. Um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily getting a computer science degree then getting into blockchain. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you just want to get a job, I don't think the computer science degree is necessary. But, you know, if you're forced to go to college, maybe by your parents or something like that, or you want to really do some seriously deep work as a blockchain developer, you could get that CS degree. But if your goal is just to get a job and break in the industry, I don't think it's necessary. So I hope that was helpful, Allie, and I hope that's helpful to everyone else who's watching because I know a lot of you have that exact same question because I see it pop up over and over again. All right, so now let's move on to some jobs, all right? So one thing that I get all the time, people say, hey, I want to become a blockchain developer, but whenever I look online, everything's looking for senior developers with all this experience. You know, nobody's hiring junior developers, and that's simply not true, okay? So I'm going to draw your attention to that right now. Um, here's a job for a full stack developer intern at vent mode. All right. So you'll see here, this is like an equity remote position. Um, so, you know, you may not necessarily see immediate pay for something like this, but this could be a good way for you to get experience. All right. A lot of times people say, oh, these job positions need all this experience. How do I get experience before I can become a real world blockchain developer and make, you know, a big salary and all this stuff? Well, here's a good way to start. All right. One one strategy is sometimes it's just getting your foot in the door. And sometimes that means like being a front end developer at a company that does blockchain and working your way over toward blockchain. So if you started at an intern position, like at a place like this, I don't know this company, so I'm, I can't make any guarantees, but that could be a way for you to get hired um, in a different role. And it's also remote. So people say, how can I get a remote job as a beginner? Well, this may be a way for you to do it. All right, so that's an internship job, but here's also a junior Solidity developer job, right? So some things I hear from other people too are like, Nobody hires junior smart contract developers. Well, that's also not true. Okay, here's a job posting for a junior Solidity developer, all right? Talking about the, uh, the languages and technologies that I teach you on this channel. So Enigma develops protocol libraries in Solidity. They use voting contracts, auction contracts, and or random number generators. So I show you how to build a voting app on this channel with Solidity. I show you how to do pretty much everything that this job requires, all right? So there's a good example of a junior Solidity developer role. So if you got really good uh, as a brand new developer, this might be something that's uh, available for you. And I know a lot of you are coming from different development backgrounds on this channel. Some of you are already software developers watching, and a lot of you are also beginners with not much programming experience. Um, so I want to try to give you good advice for both of you, because that's the two different types of people that are getting into blockchain. Either you're starting from square one or you're coming from a different background. All right. And, you know, starting as a junior could work for either of those. Right. So let's do another question. All right. Next is a question I got from Tim. So Tim says, uh, hey, I've been enjoying all your videos. Thank you very much, Tim. Although I'm somewhat skeptical on mainstream adoption of cryptocurrency, I definitely see the value of learning blockchain. In your recent video, you mentioned a reasonable time frame for learning blockchain, being able to call yourself a blockchain developer be one year. All right, my question is two parts. Uh, what type of weekly commitment would you suggest, eight to 12 hours, et cetera, or to maximize learning, what would be the applicable 20% to focus on learning to give the 80% results, all right? So a little background on Tim. He says he's been uh, developing for 20 years. He's got pretty impressive resume here. I won't read the whole question because it's kind of long, but um, yeah, I think I get the gist of what you're asking, Tim, and I will answer it and hopefully it'll help more people too. So first of all, Tim, if you've been a programmer for 20 years, uh, you got a huge leg up on probably most of the people watching this channel. Uh, probably a really small fraction of people have been developing for 20 years. I would say you could pick up blockchain pretty fast uh, if you already know other programming languages and have been working for that amount of time, all right? I think it would take you way less than a year. You could probably do it in six to 12 weeks, something like that. So you asked this question about the 80-20 principle. And for those of you who are watching who don't understand this, he's talking about the Pareto principle, which is basically that like 20% of the actions cause 80% of the results or saying that backwards, 80% of uh, the things that you want to achieve come from 20% of the effort. So he's asking, what's the 20% you should focus on in order to get the most results? So really going back to what I just talked about in the last question, which is going for the throat on this core skills of blockchain development. So if you wanna build blockchain based applications, it's really about learning how to use the blockchain, how to write smart contracts, and also how to develop applications that you know interact with it. Maybe it's front-end applications with JavaScript or some back-end application uh, with JavaScript, Python, or some other library. 
So to maximize this, I would basically say, you know, do some of the tutorials where you're building applications on your own. That's what I like to focus on this channel is to teach you how to build apps because that's the best way to learn. And do that a couple of times maybe and then go build your own application because this is what's going to reinforce your learning. So I would maybe just try to figure out how long that takes you, okay? You know, look at your schedule, determine how long does it take me to, you know, complete the first tutorial, just like do it, see how long it takes you, and then try to extrapolate that out over maybe another tutorial, maybe another one, and then try to figure out how long it takes you to build that portfolio piece. And if you've got 20 years of programming experience, you know, you should be able to do that pretty quickly and build a resume where you could start, you know, applying to blockchain companies. Because in a lot of cases, you know, even a small amount of blockchain knowledge is really valuable, especially if you have an impressive 20 year career with other programming languages. I mean, I talked about in one of my recent videos about how people with, you know, over six years of programming experience and only a little bit of blockchain experience are earning over $150,000 per year as blockchain developers. So that's what I would say, Tim, you know, just try to figure out for yourself how long that takes you and then factor that in as a number of hours per week. And then that's your 80-20, right? Build the few apps, build a portfolio piece. Those are the 20% of things that you should focus on that will give you the most results. All right, let's look at a couple more jobs here. So another question I get a lot is people say, you know, what should I learn to get hired as a blockchain developer? And it can get so overwhelming because, you know, you could learn Solidity, JavaScript, Python, uh, Go, C++, Rust. I mean, there's so many languages that are used for blockchain. It's really easy to just, you know, you're, let your head explode and not even know where to start. So to avoid getting overwhelmed, you really just need to focus, all right? You need to pick something and commit. And you want to be, you know, specific about what you pick. So I would consider two factors, what's in demand and what do you have the resources to learn? So as far as demand goes, you know, the skills that I teach you on this channel are very in demand, right? I talked recently in one of my last videos about uh, LinkedIn calling blockchain one of the hottest skills for 2020. And it says right here in the report from LinkedIn, uh, let's see here. Those breaking into blockchain this year learn the programming language used to write Ethereum smart contracts, Solidity. So that's number one, Solidity is clearly in demand. And also, well, that's what I teach you on this channel. So you can follow any of these free tutorials. Uh, and if you wanna take the next step, you can always join my blockchain developer bootcamp. So let's look at some Solidity jobs here. All right, so this is a software engineer job for smart contracts at uh, Masari in New York. So, you know, what would you need to learn for this type of thing? Well, he here's some of the skills that I talk about in my channel, right? So Ganache, uh, that's the personal blockchain that's used for developing smart contracts on your computer. Uh, Web3.js, this is a JavaScript library for interacting with uh, the Ethereum blockchain. Truffle, the smart contract development framework, Solidity, the programming language that I just talked about that was in the LinkedIn report that I also teach you on this channel, all right? Talking about uh, maintaining and upgrading smart contracts, uh, design principles. So those are the types of skills that you need to know to get hired for a position like this. All right, let's look at another one. So this is a Solidity developer in Santa Monica, all right? So same sort of thing, responsibilities, work with existing contracts and implement new features on the project's pipeline. Uh, let's see here. So similar kind of skills. And then also one more Solidity job. Uh, this is a Solidity developer, uh, full-time position. So again, responsibilities, working with a team of developers to develop blockchain-based decentralized applications for enterprise use. So what are they looking for? Uh, let's see here. Experience developing on top of Ethereum. All right, check. Experience developing Solidity smart contracts. Check. All right, so experience in DevOps environment is a plus, all right? So really, it's basically the same kinds of things I've been talking about. Ethereum, Solidity, Truffle, Web3.js. These are all types of jobs that employ people who know the skills that I'm talking about uh, that I teach you primarily in this channel and also inside my bootcamp, all right? So those are the skills. And, you know, another thing I hear a lot is people say, you know, blockchain is too niche or it's a bubble that's already burst or that, you know, it's not going to see mass adoption and it's gonna just fade away. Well, I just don't think it's simply true. Like if you looked on LinkedIn at some of the big companies that are hiring, all right? So PayPal is hiring a, a senior strategist for partnerships and blockchain. So big companies are taking blockchain very seriously. They're trying to stay on top of the game uh, to bring blockchain solutions because they know they need to do it in order to adapt to the marketplace. And also you'll see huge names on this list uh, you know, what's that MasterCard, uh, Facebook, and also Walmart, right? So it's not just these big tech companies. It's also just really vanilla, big organizations know they need to adopt blockchain technology to stay relevant in the marketplace. All right. 
And that's really good news because that means more and more people are gonna be hiring blockchain developers. That demand's gonna keep growing and growing. And there's gonna be so much more opportunities for people who know the types of skills that I teach in this channel that you, you have access to learn. All right, let's go with one more question here. Uh, this is from, let's see here, Sasik Kiran. Hope I'm saying your name right. My apologies if I mispronounced that. But he says, I wanna do a mini project on blockchain application. I wanna build an application in which there should be student results, uh, data will be stored in database. Okay, I want to provide blockchain functionalities so that data, uh, so that no one can modify except the authorized personnel. And I want to have specific privileges for specific people. And so three persons need to approve. Okay, so I think I know what's going on here. Uh, I skipped over a lot of points, but basically he needs a smart contract where only certain people can make transactions. And then also uh, three people must sign a transaction before it gets approved on the blockchain, okay? So yes, this is totally possible. And here's some resources that I would recommend to do that. So if you look at a website like, uh, sorry, a library like Open Zeppelin, uh, this is a library that has a lot of great uh, things done for you in Ethereum that you can just import into your own smart contracts. I want to point you to, uh, let's see here, some permissions, because that's a simp essentially what you want to implement is uh, some permissions in your smart contracts. Okay. So if you look at uh, something like the ownership library and you look at like the ownable uh, mix-in or contract that you can inherit from in your smart contracts, this will allow you to set an owner uh, or like any other type of access control list user that can do certain things inside your smart contract. You could use the ownable one, you could do uh, any other type of role-based permissions that you can handle yourself. You can look at a, a library like this to, to get a good example. Okay, so Solidity uses these things called modifiers that you can add to your functions that will allow you to do this. So you can say, you know, only an admin can do this or only a mentor can do this, right? So that's the first thing, restricting who can call the functions. The next thing, if you want multiple people to sign off on a transaction before it's executed, you can do a couple of things. One would be a multi-signature wallet. Okay, that's where a bunch of people have to sign something before it goes through. Uh, that's one way you could do it. You could also do some sort of you know on-chain storage, like voting-based system, where basically you create a function that says, you know, vote for this to happen, vote for this to happen, vote for this to happen three times from three people. And then you basically create a function that says, you know, make the thing happen. And it only happens if the three people have voted and executed that. Um, so that's a way that you could achieve exactly what you're looking for. So creating permissions with modifiers and uh, ownership, access control list, roles inside Solidity for your functions, and also uh, creating multi-signature or some sort of way that people have to vote before something happens. Okay. So um, I hope that helps. And that's all I got for today, guys. So if you got questions, leave them down in the comment section below or email me. My email's always open at gregory at dappuniversity.com. Let me know if you like this new type of video so that I can do more of these like this for you all. As always, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can become blockchain developers. And if you wanna take that next step and master blockchain, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.